welcome back to the wizard shop the last video we did was kind of crazy kind of silly this one's going to be a lot more serious we're going to tell you guys the story of omega auto clinic right after this so the story of this shop begins actually at my house I was working at a machine shop and I was writing programs. I was setting up CNC Swiss turn lathes as they're called. I just got to thinking over the years of places that I've worked that I just, I'm one of the people that I don't like to be told what to do. If I want to go on vacation, I'm going to go when I want to go, not when I'm approved to go. Anyways, it goes along the line that I decided that it was time to open my own business. And I knew that I was really good at fixing cars. I had many years experience. I worked in the military on heavy equipment, and tanks and five tons and big trucks and things of that nature. I worked on cranes and forklifts and cars and trucks and all kinds of different vehicles for many, many years. And it came to a point where I decided it's time to go on my own. At my house, I actually have a small shop and that's where I started. It was really small, like two cars in there. But I didn't have millions of dollars in the bank, so I had to start small, I had to start somewhere. And that business grew for a while, and it did really well. I got a lot of customers and a lot of, a lot of money coming in, and we decided to move up to the next level, which was actually in town. We, we live outside of town, but this place that we found was in town, and it was a rental. And the size of that building, well, just follow me and I'll show you. So basically the size of the building that I was in in Halstead was the width from the lifts, to the wall, and just about as long down there to the end of the lift, the third lift down there. So it's basically a long rectangle. That's all I had to work in. You can see it in Car Issues, the reality show that Hoovy filmed, and I also starred in that as the mechanic. It shows that building in there. And also some of Hoovy's older videos will show that older building as well. It was a brick building from the 1920s or something. It was really old. You could actually cram five cars in there but that was leaving you not much room to walk. And we got to the point where I was just starting to get into repairing exotics. And I would get one or two of those in the shop. Those can't sit outside. So I quickly would be running out of room really fast. Also at that time, we hired Dave in the office. Some of you know him as Crazy D. He has his own YouTube channel. He sells farm equipment. We'll get into that here in a minute. But at the time, I actually had a Kansas dealer's license. I was selling cars, used cars, and he was my salesman. He did really good, but we ran into a lot of red tape and issues, and I just really got tired of that, so we quit selling used cars. It, it was, for us, it wasn't worth the hassle. It just wasn't worth it. So this was about the time that we're getting to the end of working out of that building in Halstead. We were outgrowing it really fast, and we started looking and looking. It wasn't much longer after that. We ended up here. So we were actually looking around to, to rent uh, probably a building half this size, maybe even a little smaller. And we got to finding out that commercial property, no matter if you're renting or buying, or especially renting, is extremely through the roof high. We were finding that we could almost buy a building for half the cost per month than renting one. So we did some more searching. We found a couple buildings here in Newton and we found one we were interested in. And the, the guy who owned it said, no, I'm actually not gonna sell this building anymore, but I do have another one for sale. So, okay, so I rode with him in his truck and we came to here. And I walked in and I was like, oh my goodness. This is like the size of an arena. And I was kind of thinking, is this really what I'm looking for? Is this, I don't know, I, I wasn't thinking this big. But it just kind of came to me. I guess some people who have started businesses, people who have become successful in their life, there were certain points in their life where they went with their gut feeling. They said, I, got, I don't know why, but I've got to do this. This seems right. It seems like it's something I need to do. I sent pictures of the building to friends and family, and they all had the same statement, you're a fool, the building's too big. No mechanic shop is that big. Not even the dealerships have a building that big. You're crazy. But I didn't let that deter me. When we started talking with financing and getting the thing purchased, we looked at the numbers, and we could purchase this large building for half the cost of renting a building, 
half this size. We were like, that's a no-brainer because in 20 years, it's done. We own it. No more payments. Now that we've got going, we're going strong. I've got these new lifts from Binpack, and I've gotten more and more into exotic cars. And now I have plenty of room. There are times now that even with this huge building, I'm almost running out of room now. It's because I'm pulling in types of work and types of cars that cannot sit outside. There are dealerships that I've heard of, Ferrari dealerships, Lamborghini dealerships, that when they're done with your Lamborghini, they park it outside. We don't do that here. If you bring us an exotic car, it will come into the building and it will stay in the building until you come and pick it up when the, when the job is finished. That's one of the selling points of buying such a large building. That's why it really works for us. As with any business, as you get to running it, you start to learning things and you start to figuring things out that do work and things that don't work. And one of the things we really liked about this building, other than being able to store the exotics, is that we could store just about every car that comes into here. We live in Kansas, and in the springtime especially, there can be large hail and tornadoes and things. Obviously, this building is not going to protect against a tornado, but the large hail, sometimes it can be golf ball sized hail. We don't have to worry about insurance claims for customers' cars because they stay inside. So we protect the exotic cars from when they get here until they, when they leave. We also get ourselves away from insurance claims from the weather, so that's the weather. And there's a third reason. And this one doesn't happen often, but it's non-payment from a customer. If you guys have seen my Mazda Millennia video, that was one of the scenarios that we went through. Luckily, I can lock your car up. I don't want to. I'd rather you pay, but I can lock your car up in my shop. I have a very nice security system. You won't get in here and get it back out until you pay me. Unfortunately, we have to do that. It, it really stinks. I really don't like to have to do that, but it's the name of the game, I guess. And that only happens once or twice a year, if that. It's very rare that it happens, but I, I'm glad that I have that option available that kind of ensures that I get paid. Some of the things I'm telling you guys today are actually been questions in the comments section. People are like, how did you get into this? Or why did you buy that building? Or this or that. This is like an answer to all those questions all at once. And one of the questions is, how did you get into foreign cars and eventually exotic cars? What, what was the draw there? I mean, I'm just a guy from Kansas and I spent a lot of time working on domestic and Asian vehicles for a great deal of the time. But Personally, I started to own my own European cars, Mercedes and BMWs and things of that nature, Land Rovers, and I absolutely love them. There's some, some sort of a charm or something about them that they possess that a Chevy doesn't have, a Ford doesn't have it. And car racer, didn't you meet some crazy guy that had a whole lot of foreign cars? Yep, I started posting online, especially in the Mercedes forum called Peach Parts, that I can fix these types of cars. I've gotten into fixing them and that's when I got a message from Tyler Hoover from Hoovy's Garage. This is over 10 years ago guys. This is a long time ago. I've known Hoovy for a long time. He had just started selling cars, used cars himself as a small dealership. He was looking for someone he could trust and also and get a competitive price per hour for the labor rates. He didn't Understandably, he didn't want to pay full price for his repairs because that would make it that much less profit he would make on his cars. And in a shop, you can afford to offer a smaller labor rate if you can keep a large volume going. And he did. It's basically fleet pricing. You would get that with any kind of service that anyone could offer. And he did. He kept, he kept the ball rolling. There was always two or three cars coming. He'd pick up one, drop off another, and it was just a constant circle that was going for a long time. And it, actually, as you can see, it hasn't stopped. One of the things I've done with, with Tyler is I've earned his trust. I've earned that he, if I tell him something, that's what it is. There's no, I don't hide things. I don't lie to him. I don't pull the wool over his eyes. There's no surprises on his bill. And I'm not trying to find ways or avenues to get at his money. That's not what I'm here to do. And it's been a beneficial, not only a business relationship, but also a friendship. It's through him that I've met a lot of the people that have their cars in here right now. They've, through him or through a club that he's a member of or this or that, or through word of mouth, different avenues like that, that the word got out. How I got into exotics is working on European 
foreign cars. You know, I do really good work. I do honest work. Some of these people would have BMWs, Mercedes, and they would be like, wow, this guy, he really knocked it out of the park. I don't trust these other people to work on my Ferrari. I think I would be willing to allow him to at least look at it. So they get, I get a phone call. Would you like to try to work on my Ferrari or this or that or my Lamborghini? And yeah, I'll, I'll take. And I taught myself. I learned through research and 20 years of experience working on cars and also being methodical and careful working on those types of cars. M more and more those started coming in. I did good jobs. I set up accounts with parts suppliers where I could get parts for these types of cars. We just recently got the Lamborghini official diagnostic computer, the Lara and the LDAS. Things are really booming as far as exotic cars go. One of the things that people really enjoy about me working on their exotic cars is that they can get it back. There's no weird stuff like scratch the paint or our damaged his wheels or just take my time. I'm not fast at it and I don't want to be fast at working on an exotic car. I want to be thorough. So it takes a little bit longer for me to get one of those cars done, but it wasn't a rush job. It was done properly. So that's how I've gotten that work in here and how I continue to keep that work in here. So I've also gotten the question in the comments section, how did you get into YouTube? How did you get into filming? So when I had the shop in Halstead, that smaller shop, is when his YouTube channel was starting to do really well and take off. He was making good money. He told me that maybe that'd be something I might be interested in or look into it. And I kind of was like, oh, I, don't, I don't know about all that YouTube stuff. But I started getting comments in his videos where I was starred in his video fixing his cars. People kept saying, the wizard needs his own channel. The wizard needs his own channel. We would really like to see that. And I finally answered the call. I was like, all right, I'll give this a shot. And that's where Mrs. Wizard comes in. Hey everybody, I'm usually behind the scenes, but every now and again I make an appearance. I can come up with good content, I can come up with good videos, but I don't know much about filming or editing, and that's what she does. Yeah, I actually teach digital art, and right now I'm on distance learning, and so I've gone from reaching 100 kids a day to emailing them and talking to them through Google Classroom. Um, but you know, when we first started, I'd come up on a Friday and we'd shoot on uh, a video after I do payroll. I am the bookkeeper, like the last video said. Yep. Um, so I, I live, breathe Adobe products, so it was no big jump for me. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, last summer we said, hey, let's, let's do two videos. So we added another one during the middle of the week. It was still okay. Yeah. Then the school year started and we're like, we can still do two videos a week, even though I'm teaching full time. And it still worked. Yep. And then now that the situation here has started, we've actually added a third video. And in some ways... It's kind of nice. I, I'm not as busy as I used to be. I'm not running around my classroom all the time, so shooting videos for you guys actually is, breaks up my day a lot. So a lot of what we film will be the vehicles that are actually in the shop at the time. There are YouTubers out there that go out and purchase vehicles on purpose to make it content for their videos, or they look for certain things going on to make that in video. But a lot of our content actually comes to us. We don't have to search so hard. Mm -hmm. A vehicle will come in, maybe there's common issues with that vehicle that I know from experience, and I'll say, hey, that'll be a great video, and th there you go, you guys get a video. So a lot of our stuff comes in the door. We don't have to go searching for it. Yeah, a lot of times we're like, well, what are we going to film? And we talk about what's there, and we work it out together, and say, hey, that sounds like a good video. Let's go make it. So, so anyway. Better go check on the camera and make sure it's not go check on the camera. Messed up, something messed up on it. So me and Mrs. Wizard, who is also half owner of this shop, we're really down to earth people. You'll see on Hoovy's Garage where I joke about buying airplanes and private islands and yachts. That's obviously not gonna happen. It's not a possibility. That's not who we are. But the truth of the matter is in running this shop, another avenue I wanted to talk about is the cost of running such a large shop. Last winter, not this winter, but the one before when we were first here, I tried using just natural gas radiant heaters, which is the biggest bill here, one of the biggest bills as far as utilities, which could be the gas bill. And there was one month in February of 2019 where my gas bill for one month was $1,000 for one month. And that's when I decided 
that is not going that's not going to work. I'm not going to shell out that kind of money. I know I have a big building and I knew the heating bill would be expensive, but I also know there are ways around that. So one of the things I did to cut down on the heating bill is I purchased a clean burn CB500 waste oil burner. These are fully legit EPA certified units that you purchase that you take the used motor oil, gear oil, things of that nature that would normally be sent off to be recycled or who knows what they do with it, dump it, I don't know what they do. But we take it and burn it in this burner and it produces tons of heat, virtually free. There's a tire guy and an oil change guy in Halstead that also saves up his oil and he gives it to me because he doesn't want to know what to do with it. He has a smaller shop. He would have to pay to get rid of it. I take it for free. We have huge totes, 300 gallon totes. When he gets one full, I go and pick it up. And I bring it here and give him an empty one. And between what oil we have here and what oil I get from him is enough to get us through a winter. It keeps us nice and warm and it dropped my heating bill by 70%. Just really brought it down, which made it totally tolerable. The electric bill here, you wouldn't think so. The largest contributor to my electric bill here is the lights. My electric bill is really not that big until we start turning on the lights. 150 watts is what one of those fixtures are, just one. There's 50 watts times three bulbs times 50 fixtures. That's almost 8,000 watts. Think about that. That's like those little space heaters. They're about 1,000 watts a piece times eight running all the time. Eight space heaters running all the time. That's what it costs to. Eventually, I want to go to LED on all these bulbs. These are T5s. They're supposed to be pretty efficient, but it doesn't matter. Even if I put LEDs, it's still going to be expensive. It's going to be the biggest expense of the shop. And then, of course, you've got insurance and all the different other things in the mortgage payment. It's quite expensive to keep a place like this. And that's why in this business, we have multiple avenues of income. We don't just fix cars and hopefully that's enough to make it work. We have multiple other ways. You guys are one of those that help contribute to the success of Omega Auto Clinic through YouTube. That money runs through the shop because the shop is used to generate the videos. So it's a business. It's part of the business. That's what we do here. So that's about a third of the income. The other third would be fixing the cars, all the repairs that I do. And there's a third avenue that we have, and that is used farm equipment. Let's go take a look outside and I'll show you what I mean. So as you can see, we have used tractors, we have plows, discs, bush hogs, all kinds of different three-point equipment. Crazy D goes to farm sales or estate auctions and picks up this equipment and we're able to put it on the lot and repurpose it. There's a lot of hobby farmers or people with horses and things that need this equipment, that, but, but they don't want to buy it brand new for 10 grand for this piece and five grand for that part. They don't, they don't want to spend that kind of money. This is where we come in and we're able to supply all these things that were normally going to sit on somebody's property for years. We clean them up, make sure they're functional, and they're able to get some more life out of them. We'll get quite a good profit out of selling this stuff. We're glad that we can offer that to the people that are into the, the smaller farms or hobbies or things of that nature. So I'm pretty sure that you probably won't find a shop in the whole United States that sells used farm equipment and also works on Lamborghini Murcielagos and Ferrari 550s and 348s and 355s. You're not going to find that combination anywhere else. It's kind of weird. And also a guy who has a YouTube channel. It's kind of a weird combination. But anyways, I thought you guys would like to hear the story of start to finish how we got where we're at and how we make this all work. We're nothing like the last crazy video that we just did. That was a joke. We didn't intend to be actors. We were just doing, we knew that the acting was bad. It was all done that way on purpose. We needed a good laugh, a stress relief, and so did you guys. A lot of you in the comments said, thanks for the video. It really relieved some stress. It took my mind off of all this we're going through right now. So. That was the point of it. That was why we made the video. So we hope you guys like what we got going on. Here pretty soon we have an Audi video coming up. We also have some updates on the Ferrari 550 and the fuel pump situation, some things that I found to repair, the fuel pump modules. 
And on the old 69 Fleetwood that we have in the back, I just purchased some exhaust manifolds from a guy up in Wisconsin. So I want to thank him for that. They should be on their way here pretty shortly. We also have a brand new carburetor going on it. Everything's been taken care of with that and get it back together and get it on the road. Be a great video for you guys. So as you can see, we got quite a lot going on, a lot more cool videos to come. Don't forget my Amazon affiliates page if you're looking for tools. There's a lot of them listed there. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button, do that right away. Many more cool videos to come. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.